Garmin Activity Profiles. What are they? How do we use them? How can I customize my experience to reflect my specific goals and needs? All of that and more we will cover here as we take a deep dive into the world of Garmin Activity Profiles with stories and examples to share along the way. Right now in the greater ecosystem, there seems to be a missing gap between what users want and what users see. As developers look to enhance their users' experience, understanding how a user thinks and how they utilize activity profiles can help to bridge this gap. We want to be able to provide developers with the tools and examples that they need and to demonstrate how Garmin has elevated the user experience. First, I want to introduce myself. Very excited to be here with everyone to share some insights into what Garmin Activity Profiles can offer for our users. I'm part of the engineering business development team here at Garmin, where I work as a liaison between our internal engineering teams and many of our external partners to help facilitate the business needs that coincide with various technology implementations. Outside of work, I'm also a multi-sport athlete who use cross-training as a methodology for improving my training. I believe that cross-training, or the ability to utilize multiple activities to accomplish a specific goal, is the best way to structure a training plan. I've found through my experience that my running is improved most from biking, my biking improved most through strength training, my strength training improved most through swimming, and overall my endurance is directly related to swimming. So it really does become a full circle. This requires me to have a way to separate out my data or my activities to know what I did and how it compared to my goal. I use a number of different products within Garmin, so I have experience with many of our offerings. However, my two favorite product favorites, and what I highlight a lot in this presentation, surfaces around the Phoenix and Enduro lines. I would like to start off with a quote here that I think really encompasses the idea of what an activity profile should be about. Information is a source of learning, but unless it is organized, processed, and available to the right people in a format for decision making, it is a burden, not a benefit. I feel strongly about using data to make decisions, but ultimately the data must be palatable and easy for the user to understand, otherwise it really is just numbers flashing in front of you. At Garmin, we focus on offering a broad range of data metrics, but ultimately, in order to enhance the user experience, it is important to utilize data points that make the most sense for what you are looking to accomplish. This is the essence of an activity profile. Let's start out with understanding what exactly is an activity profile. An activity profile is a collection of settings that optimize your device depending on how you are using it. Each activity has a set of data metrics that can be viewed within your device, both while you are using the watch as well as post-session. Garmin works across five different segments covering everything from fitness to outdoor, to automotive, marine, and even aviation. So you can imagine just how many different product types we offer and how vast our customer base really is. But how do we differentiate between our customers? Well, one of the ways we do this is through the use of activity profiles, which allow us to separate what is important to each individual user and provide them with the most customized experience possible based on their goals. You can see here in the picture that Garmin devices have a number of different activities to choose from, many of them standardized, but we also have the ability to customize your own activities. Each device has a list of activities that you can choose from, and so as you begin a new activity, you can select the one of your choosing. This list is as easy as it appears here, where you can scroll through and select which one you want. You can see it is highlighted here on Trail Run, and below that is Bouldering. As you continue to scroll down, you can build your own menu of favorite activities and they will remain here for when you want to begin a new one. So what does an activity profile actually look like? You saw on the last slide that there is a list of activities with which you can choose. Many of these activities, such as run, are pre-added to your list of favorites, but you can customize this list with any activities you want. Let's say you are focused primarily on kayaking you can add that activity into the list of favorites. Each one of these activities has a host of metrics built in that you can then view. We call these screens data fields in your device, 
where you can customize the metrics to your own liking. Each activity will have default settings built in as far as what a typical user may want to view, so there's not a need to do anything at all, but many users do want to create their own experience here. So if you find that something is missing or that there is a metric or format that you prefer to view, you have the ability to build it yourself. While the default settings will be constructed into each different activity profile, you have the ability to customize these data fields however you wish. There are a number of different things to think about here. Which metrics do you want to view? What is the order in which you want to view those metrics? What additions do you want to include into your activity, such as the ability to listen to music or even set an alert based on time? You can name the activity whatever you like as well, so if there's a special activity that you do, for example, you can include many of these data fields and settings and they will stay in there each and every time you do this activity. It's a great way for you to be able to filter this activity type. You can see here on the left, this is a picture of an actual activity profile with the total distance up top, the total time and pace here in the middle, and the individual's weekly total at the bottom. These faces have the ability to change in the way that a user would like to view them. So where did activity profiles actually come from? Well, we set out to be a leader in the space here, asking ourselves questions that had not yet been answered by anyone. Rather than just release capabilities, we set out to answer important questions by getting into our athletes' heads. What do they need? What do they not need? Data can be misleading, and there are only so many data fields that can be filled. We needed a solution to optimize our athletes' capabilities. And thus, activity profiles were born. We have continued to innovate, adding more and more activities through the years as we expand our offering to our users. These activities are tested with real-life athletes who get to share with us how it should be used and what data points are important. I would like to share a recent example in the sport of adventure racing. In 2020, the world was captivated by a race production called World's Toughest Race taking place in Fiji. It reinvented and rejuvenated a decade-old sport called adventure racing that was seemingly losing popularity. As the world watched this sport, and athletes sprung to find their next adventure race, Garmin set out to be the first to market and will launch an adventure racing mode specifically designed for this sport to bring technology into a world that has otherwise shied away from these advances in the past. We didn't do this on our own, however. We partnered with some of the top global organizations and athletes around the globe to build a profile capability that specifically solved the problem in the marketplace. This is just one example of so many where Garmin seeks to be not only on the forefront, but the preferred choice to do so. Our activity profiles are tested by athletes and built for our users so that they are ready to go right out of the box. The idea is to not provide data overload, but to focus on what is important. Of course, this does not mean that users don't have the ability to customize what is important to them by changing the data points that are viewable. We currently have 31 different activity profiles that we can offer, with many more on the way. Users have the ability to add their activities to their list of favorites, where they can quickly start an activity from this list. If you are a hiker, for example, you may add the hike activity profile into your favorites. But what happens if your activity isn't listed, or if you want to change the data fields that are being viewed? or if you even want to build a very specific activity for a one-time event. Well, we have a solution for you. The ability to completely customize your own activities, data fields within profiles, or even set up a specific event such as a race format that is built for your needs. This is what we believe developers should be thinking about as well. Our users are building activity profiles that fit their goals and needs, which allows them to be in control of the entire experience. Let's look at an example here with an activity type, trail run. Trail running is one of my personal favorite activities, and so I have had the opportunity to understand which data fields are important to me and to construct an activity profile that best reflects my goals. This has really come after a lot of experience in trialing out different settings that best fit for me. 
I wanted to display the difference here between what the default activity profile will contain and what my activity profile will contain. As you can see from the chart here, my main screen will include total distance, ascent, and heart rate. My second screen will show pace, cadence, and time of day. I typically run a wide variety of different trails in different locations, so I always ensure my course settings are tracking my route. This is for safety reasons, but also so that I can navigate the same route the next time I want to do it. We also have the ability to download external applications. Being on the trail, I like to carry as little on me as possible. So the ability to sync up Spotify on my watch and add a playlist to my run is really beneficial as it will connect right to my headphones. The other two items I often will utilize on here are a pace calculator, especially if I have done the route before, to understand how I'm performing relative to my goal as well as an alert set for certain distances so I can know when to turn around or start making my way back. Let's say, for example, I wanted to do no more than 20 miles in my run today. I can set an alert at mile 10 that it's time to start thinking about the return. Garmin covers a wide array of activities and hobbies. No matter what activity you are looking to do, we want to ensure that our user journey can be tracked. Everyone has a story to tell and goals to meet. We want to ensure that every user has the chance to be the best version of themselves that they possibly can. No matter what your focus is or what your activity of choice is, we want to give you the opportunity to share your progress with the world. When we think about Garmin holistically, activity profiles are the means by which we can connect our trail runners with our snowboarders, with our kayakers. We can think of activities in a very general sense, such as just biking, but for many athletes, we need to get even more granular. So I wanted to share an example here of how the same activity in different formats could be so vastly different when it comes to what you utilize your device for. Let's look at biking as an example here. We could think of all biking in the same way or we could take a very different approach and understand that biking can have many different forms and for different reasons. You could be riding technical trails on a mountain bike, riding pavement or gravel on a road bike, or you could be training indoors on a stationary bike. These activities may all feel the same, but the goals that go along with them are very different. I personally utilize all three modes for very different purposes which means I have different activity profiles used for each one. Like I just mentioned, I use different types of biking for different training purposes. This requires utilizing different metrics and data fields in order to reach my training goals. For example, my mountain bike ride is going to be vastly different than my indoor bike ride. On a mountain bike, I'm really less concerned with things like speed or even how much time I have spent out on the trail. I'm looking to explore new trails, focus on elevation gain, and ensure that I have my maps up in case I get lost. Typically on a road ride, I would not utilize the same metrics. While I still want GPS to show my distance, I'm much more focused on working on speed riding and elevating my heart rate. Additionally, I will use my indoor rides as a time-based training opportunity. For these rides, it is all about hitting a certain time and capturing the distance within that time frame, which is why I want a running clock on my watch the whole time I'm riding indoors. I don't need maps, obviously, but my main screen should show total time and heart rate. So here, what I have showcased on this chart is the different data fields I will want to be on my watch for each of these different bike activities. You can see just how different each one is, despite the fact that they are all biking activities. Garmin understands that our athletes use different forms of the same sport for very different reasons, and we want to help developers capture these use cases. Now that we understand a bit about what activity profiles are and how they work, we should ask the question, well, why does any of this matter? Why are they important? The simple answer is that every activity is unique, no athlete is the same, and thus as a user, you need the ability to build your profiles the way you need them for whatever is thrown your way. 
They can be as customizable as you like, or you can choose to use the same profiles the same way every time. The important part is that the choice is up to the user, and understanding what you are looking to accomplish plays a big role in determining what you may want in your profile. Understanding the user experience and the customization capabilities can help developers build for their own user base to ensure that they are capturing the full market potential. Now that we understand the important role activity profiles play in our device, let's take a look at a real example as to how we can customize activities to our own liking, even if they're not already built in. As I noted in the beginning, I do endurance obstacle course racing. Well, we don't have a specific OCR setting that would necessarily suit my needs. Some of it could be considered trail running, but with the obstacles that doesn't quite fit, other parts of it could be considered multi-sport, but that doesn't really cover it necessarily either because it truly is just one activity. So I took it upon myself to build my own OCR activity profile. This allows me to construct a profile that is customized to my needs, shows me the metrics that I care about, and will track and store in a way that allows me to recall it as an OCR event. If I want to search through my previous OCR activities, I will be able to do so by labeling it this way. We want to be able to provide our users with the same customized experience so that it is tracked correctly. Before we jump in here, there are some questions that need to be answered. Things like what my goals are, what metrics are going to be important, and if I want the data for making decisions within an activity as opposed to just collecting to view afterwards. These are important questions to answer because it may determine the data fields you choose, the order in which you view them, and the amount of time you are actually willing or would like to spend on your watch. The choice really belongs to the user, and why this is important is because it can allow them to build a very specific activity type as opposed to keeping it generic. Here you will see how we actually construct a new activity type on the watch, and just how simple it can be. Let's use my previously stated OCR example here to showcase. To start out, you will want to find the main menu we viewed earlier, which displays your list of activities. In this particular case, as I mentioned, there will be no OCR setting. So you will want to scroll down to the add section on the list where you can select other. That will bring you to a viewing screen where you can then type. In this case, I typed in OCR for obstacle course racing. Why is this important and relevant? Well, many activity types have very specific features or have a culmination of different requirements that a user would want to track. In the larger ecosystem, we want developers to have the ability to capture the many different unique activities that are out there. The first screen you will see in building this activity profile is the option under data fields, which include a variety of different screens that contain numerous metrics with different forms of those metrics to be able to scroll through. Here you will find the ability to filter between distance, speed, cadence, temperature, elevation, and heart rate, where you can select the format by which you want to view these metrics and even the order by which you want to view them on your device. I will showcase what this looks like and the metrics that I chose in just a bit here. In the next section, you will see the ability to customize alerts on your watch. Understanding when you reach certain distance or times can help remind you when it is time to eat or even refuel with hydration. For example, you could remind yourself to eat like I do every five miles. Put yourselves into a user's mindset here, where they're traveling through the woods in a race type event through the middle of the night. Utilizing these alerts on their device can really help keep them on track and performing their best. The alerts are part of the experience, so shouldn't they be tracked for our users to view even post-session? There are other options to consider as well. It's important to remember that these steps really only need to be taken once in order to build the activity. Everything will save under what you build, but you always have the ability to make changes or adjustments. What this allows for is the user to be able to track a history of the same event over and over. 
Using my example with OCR, I have the ability to go back in time through the years and compare different events, which will then utilize the same metrics over and over. There are other things to consider within the constructing of a profile, which include a metronome for pacing, changing the colors on the device, adding elevation, music controls with external apps like Spotify, as mentioned before, and one of my favorites, which is actually a lap setting that is particularly valuable when the activity calls for laps. Now that we understand how to construct this profile, let's take the obstacle course setting that I constructed and apply the rules of the activity into my device for optimal settings. Well, the race is a five mile lap format that can last between 12 and 24 hours, where you want to complete as many laps as possible within that time frame. This makes the lap counter particularly valuable for what I want to do. Additionally, my current pace and heart rate within an endurance event allow me to ensure that I am staying consistent and not deterring too far from where I need to be. This is what I care about during the race because it allows me to make decisions as I go. So here is everything I will add to customize my OCR setting for the race. I talked in the beginning about ensuring that the data is palatable, which is important when we think about the ability to understand what we are tracking in order to make in the moment decisions. The three areas I discussed when building the profile were data fields, alerts, and then the additional information. Here I've broken those three segments down to share what I use from each one. Within my data fields, I build in my lap mileage, current pace, and heart rate. It's not that things like overall distance don't matter, but that will track on the back end and is not helpful for me within the race. Each lap is five miles, so I will set two alerts in there and with one to remind myself to eat after each five mile loop. It's really amazing to think, but 12 hours into a race, you can forget to do many things as your mind wanders. So having that reminder on there is actually extremely valuable. I also auto lap my watch so I can count the laps that I have completed. Some other additions to my profile will include elevation, which helps me to compare relative to how I feel. Knowing how much elevation I have gained is a relative way for me to measure how I'm feeling at that exact point. I also prefer a black background, which I think helps from a viewing standpoint when it is lit up. And then of course, I like to add Spotify as an external application for music controls, which I can then link to a Bluetooth speaker that sits in my hydration pack. It does get a little lonely out there in the middle of the night, so music is pretty key. As I have touched on, it is important to see how and why this profile makes sense for me. The overarching goal is to use the information to make decisions as I go and in the moment. It's an endurance event and pacing is key, so if I want to make these adjustments, I need to be able to utilize my data to justify it. Using my experience racing along with where I know I should be is essential to achieve the success here. The metrics that I chose are all about pacing, both from a movement and internal heart rate standpoint. Whether it's nutrition or my performance on course, these metrics allow me to stay consistent. You can see down here is actually a picture of me running at one of these events with my Phoenix on. This is how we want to think about all of our users though. They're using what is most important to them and their data on the back end should reflect this. There is a problem though currently in the marketplace. Multi-sport activities are taking off. This requires the ability to combine multiple events or activities into one palatable format by which an athlete wants to view their data. We are here to offer up a way for developers to capture this market in a way that athletes actually want to see their data. The issue that we currently face today is that while Garmin Connect allows you to view your multi-sport activity as one, many other platforms currently do not, which means that everything is viewed individually. While this may not seem like a big deal, to many athletes, it is. Say, for example, you had three events in one day. Well, your activity and capability level would be greatly affected by the time you reached your third activity, such as in a triathlon. 
as opposed to if you did that event on its own. If the activities are separated in a different platform, it would appear that your effort level may not have been normal, when it was really because you had multiple activities back to back. Let's look at how Garmin is solving this issue and how we look to ensure developers have the same opportunities to do so. We talked about what this might look like for one activity, but Garmin offers a whole other opportunity to create multi-sport functionality. Again, think of a triathlon, duathlon, or even just a heavy training day where the activities go back to back, or in some cases, back to back to back. You want a way to measure this activity as one and not necessarily have to remind yourself to change it over manually. Again, we are here to help developers capture this market in a way that athletes want to view their data. So let's take a look here. The advantage of using a multi-sport activity is not only that it tracks as one event, but also that each individual activity that you add will carry the same metrics tied to it that you had built in as if it were a standalone individual activity. So for example, if you added bike into the multi-sport, it will carry over your standard bike settings. You can create a multi-sport by scrolling through the activity menu in the same section that all of your activities are listed. The multi-sport selection will allow you to name it as you choose and add whichever activities you want to. You can even add rest or transition times in between. Simply hitting the bottom right button within each activity will then transition you to the next one. We can look at a triathlon here to really showcase how a multi-sport activity can be fully customized for the user, but also track as one event. In this case, I did an Olympic triathlon, which includes an open water swim, a bike, and a run. The idea here was to find specific metrics that I cared about for each activity while still managing my overall event time closely. As an example, I specifically chose to monitor my heart rate in the swim because I have less experience in the water, which meant I wanted to take the swim a little more conservative. A high heart rate that jumped all over the place could mean an early did not finish. On the bike, I chose to monitor this via laps since it was six laps of four and a half miles each. I wanted to make sure I stayed consistent and knew that after my first lap, I would have a reference point of where I should fall. And for me, running is what I know the best, so I wanted to add in my pace time to ensure that I again had a reference point of just how fast I was moving. You can see on the chart that I have here, I've shown that there are different viewable data fields for each activity, along with the times that my watch was able to clock. You'll notice the transition times that are built in as well between each activity. This will come standard for most multi-sport activities and allow everything to track together as one, even if there are rest or transition periods in between. Garmin Connect is our backend platform for more in-depth analysis within an activity. It allows you to track and store everything you've done from your wearable to be able to look at previous sessions and even compete against your friends. So what does a multi-sport activity actually look like when it reaches Connect? Well, using this option gives you the best of everything because it will track it on the backend as one full activity but your ability to make decisions in the moment can still be done within an individual activity. Here, I have shared a display of what my triathlon ended up looking like. You can see it has tracked the swim, bike, and run, along with the transition times as one activity. We are always thinking about the what's next. There are always new activities coming down the pipeline. Our goal at Garmin is to ensure that all of our users have the ability to accomplish their goals no matter what activity they choose to do. I'd like to share a bit more about what is forthcoming here from Garmin's standpoint. As we look at our roadmap, I wanted to share some highlights here of different activities that will be added into our wearables over the next few months. As you can see on here, I've highlighted just a couple of activities that will be added into a number of our devices. Soon, 
we will be adding racket sports, including pickleball, tennis, and racquetball, as well as adding to our portfolio of winter sports with snowboarding, resort skiing, backcountry skiing, and snowshoeing to a number of our devices. These are just some of the activity profiles coming along with many more on the way. We believe developers can take advantage of our large portfolio of activities offered and that allowing for more activities to transfer can enhance the user experience. There's been a lot of information here thrown out at you today. I think it's worth coming back to ask, so how can a user get started with customizing activity profiles? And how can developers benefit from this knowledge? Understanding how athletes want to view their data and what is important for them is essential here. Again, I go back to the beginning to focus on starting small and trying to keep it simple in the start. The first thing you need to do as a user is pick your activity, really any activity that you want. The next is, determine, the next is to determine what your goals are for that activity. Is there a certain distance you want to run or a specific mountain you want to climb? And the next step is to start adding data fields and building your profile the way you would like. It makes sense to start off slow with things that you understand or even feel are essential to getting started. But as you go, you can, continue, as you go, you can continue to add or take things away. From a developer standpoint, understanding how athletes think as they move along this journey of building profiles can further enhance the experience of the way data is viewed or displayed. Showcasing what is important to each individual user in the way they want to view it is essential here. I will leave you with this final thought here, and that is that we always search to find a balance with constructing our profiles. At the end of the day, users want their data to be relevant and consistent across the many platforms they utilize. Too much data and information can be overwhelming, and finding the right balance of what is needed and wanted can be the difference of reaching goals. We want developers to have the opportunity to capture their user base in a way they haven't necessarily thought of before. So thank you all very much for joining me here today, and now I think we'd love to answer some questions.